down here in Atlanta, Georgia, take a look at this blue Lewis Eye Iguana. Absolutely amazing. And our adventure actually started here this morning at the Reptarium. Kind of geared up, ready to go, excited for the journey down south to uh, go to Crockfest. But first, we're actually going to go visit a friend in Atlanta to go shoot some stuff. It's going to be an epic trick. We're going to spend probably, I don't know, the next six, seven, eight days doing a bunch of cool animal adventures, get away from the shop a little bit. I'll miss the place, but it's going to be amazing to go adventures. So, what do you say we go talk to Lori and hit the road? All right, so we're hitting the road, Lori. You're going to be okay. I know you've got a lot to do <laughs> while we're gone. Lori's got a lot of work, so she's got the worst end of the deal. So, uh, I'll call you every day, keep me posted, okay? Gemma may lay eggs when I'm gone. So, uh, so hopefully if she lays eggs, hopefully they'll be good. I don't know what's gonna happen, so uh, good luck, all right? Yeah, okay. thanks. All right, I love you. About 40 minutes out of uh, the Reptarium, and it's interesting, this is a place called Zug Island. It's pretty nasty, it's right over there, you can see it. But what's interesting is you see that little tree? It's like 200 feet in the air, and every year since I was a kid, they always go up there and put that tree up there, and I always think, who has that job? And I'm sure someone's retired since I was a kid, so someone actually ends up taking that job over of going and walk out on a little rail, 200 feet in the air, and uh, and put that tree up there. But it's just like a Christmas classic. Uh, you know, it's, it's pretty cool, and I always get excited excited to see it. Just drove about nine hours, got a little bit of shut eye here at this hotel right here. I think we're right about on the border of Georgia. We're about to stop in two hours at my buddy's place to see his amazing collection. Uh, and then we'll be heading down to Florida, obviously to Crockfest, but we had to stop somewhere, right? And we had to see some cool animals. I can't go a day without animals. So let's get in the car, drive this last two, two and a half hours and go see some killer animals. And back to this guy, and I'm actually with Gary from GBL Iguanas. Uh, we're just visiting right now. Uh, so tell me a little bit about this monkey right here he's beautiful yeah he is so this is Diego he's our uh, our Grand Cayman uh, rock iguana he's a hybrid right um, we're somehow his fourth owner I believe really yeah and he's just a total puppy dog um, our buddy Jacob Crawford produced this guy Jeez. about seven years ago I think wow. He's an absolute puppy dog. Gosh, I love him. I mean, just the attitude. He's so beautiful. He's, I mean, just look at these absolute beautiful spikes down his back. Coloration is amazing. Again, this is the exact same animal as Tiana at our place. But of course, the females aren't as pretty as the males. And this is a darn right beautiful male as well. So we're going to look at some amazing animals. We're going to spend some time with Gary and his beautiful animals. And then we're going to be heading down to Orlando. So uh, we have a lot to see. What do you say we get started? Of course, we have a little rhino iguana right here not so little but uh, it's pretty cool little male for sure and so what got you into iguanas and I mean why you know what, what's, what's the passion there so actually I grew up in South Florida in West Palm and uh, when I was 11 12 years old my mother was not an animal person my godmother okay. loves animals and she had a friend down there who had all sorts of iguanas and other emus and tortoises right. and he just took a giant iguana it was either a Lewis I or a Cuban I don't quite remember took it and he just put it on my lap as a kid and it was just it was just game over from it was there. It, that from then you're just like I've got to do yeah, it. Yeah and then oh my god I, I became imagine. an adult I was like holy crap I can have these now. Yeah. And well they're we like are. little dinosaurs I mean they're like little pet dinosaurs they're absolutely amazing and uh, it's pretty cool definitely you know you don't see as many like you know even <laughs> even though Atlanta is a warmer area it's still cool enough where you don't want to keep these guys outside year round right so it's cool to see a place that is indoors that has a bunch of cool stuff like this and and uh, have you bred anything yet or is you're just getting not yet. Yeah, so hopefully for 2022 we'll have our first, uh, hopefully we'll have a clutch of rhinos and we're hoping for a clutch of Lewis eyes as well. <laughs> but in the next few years, as everybody matures, we should hopefully uh, start producing a whole lot more. Oh help. my goodness. <laughs> ah, help! <laughs> the, the problems of having long hair, guys, that's the problem with it. But uh, listen, I'll do it any day because it's absolutely worth it. You're such a good little monkey. Take a look at these guys. It's like little bowling balls walking around in here or something like that. Of course, these are a little Aldalbert for it. How old are these, Gary? These guys are probably about two to two and a half. 
two to two and a half. I mean, they're born literally like this size. You can see just in two, two and a half years, they can get this good. And you know, they have beautiful shells right now, which is really good. You want to keep that, that round shell as much as possible. Obviously, they get to spend the summers outside, which is really good for these guys, no doubt about it. But look at them. I mean, they're, they're fast. These guys move. They will boogie real quick for sure. Oh my gosh. And to think, you know, again, one day these guys, you know, are going to be hundreds of pounds and live a couple hundred years. Absolutely amazing. I mean, it's so cute. I want a little baby Aldalbra so bad. It's so amazing. Obviously, when we got Matilda, she was already 15 years old. So we never went through the stage of seeing them at this cute size. But uh, I just can't believe how quick they are, man. They're so funny. Oh my God, I love them. It's not all lizards here at GBL Iguanas. There's actually some beautiful snakes. This happens to be, of course, a Surinam True Red Tail, a BCC. Unbelievable. How old is this one? Um, I believe she's about, probably about 18 months or so. We've had her for about a year. Wow. Uh, so yeah, she's probably about 18 months. Uh, and she is beautiful. I mean, just look at the color of that tail. And I, the thing that's amazing is all the you know red, true red tails are a little bit different, but this one has such amazing patterning where all the little widow peaks are connected all the way down. It's just really a beautiful example of a Surinam boa. The thing that's cool, again, is the BCCs get pretty big. You know, so Surinams are going to eventually get 9, 10 foot. So Hopefully. that's, uh, it's, it's going to be, yeah, yeah. you're going to have a big snake, but it is, yeah. uh, this Look at that. Whew. That thing is gorgeous. This is a lesser Antillian iguana, or, uh, Iguana delicatissima for all those science nerds that like their uh, scientific names. Yeah. Um, super heavily endangered species from the lesser Antillian islands. Um, I'm thankful to have a, a trio of them here I got from uh, Renata Carlsey and she's been one of the few captive breeding them here for the last few years. Um, they're pretty cool as, uh, as babies, you know, they start off looking like green iguanas and as they age, they start to turn to like an, an olive color, but they get like this really nice like whitish pink head and they'll get like a little crest up here. Very social animals, they actually live in, in harems where it'll be one male for sometimes up to seven or eight iguanas in a, just in a tree. Yeah, they're pretty cool. I'm, I'm really, really happy to have these guys and be working with them and you know hopefully hopefully be able to captive breed more of them and you know, help keep that population going. Here's some of the raise outs uh, for the Lewis eye stuff here. And these guys are beautiful. Whoa, here we go. Uh, these guys love to run around and stuff like that. I mean, they're amazing. So how many are you raising up in this room? Gosh, we've got what? One pair here, two pairs. So we've got five Lewis eyes in this room in this here. Room. Yeah. And then we've got two more babies upstairs. Oh my god, that's good. That's a lot of Lewis. I, I love them. I mean, you guys remember we've been down to Iguana Land. Uh, it's amazing to see all Cyclera here. And uh, again, they just get better with age. That's the thing that's amazing about them is that especially males is that as they get older, they get more and more blue and more incredible. So these guys are amazing. I, I'm so glad that we made the trip down and got a chance to stop off here. You know me, I need my animal fix no matter where I go. So this has definitely been a good little uh, stop in the adventure down to Florida. And of course, your baby these happen to be the bearded dragons, which by the way, that matches your shirt, right. amazing. This is beautiful. Tell me a little <laughs> bit about this boy. He's a red trans. A little, active. <laughs> a little trans. That's a, and you can always tell the trans because they actually you can see through kind of their belly a little bit, and they often have that just more interesting kind of pattern to them. And then that red color, he's just beautiful, he isn't is he? Beautiful. Oh my gosh! So, him. so this is like your little project here. You want to work on it, bearing yeah. a bunch of bearded dragons? Oh, yeah. oh my god! Well, you're doing amazing. Like I said, isn't it a crazy how much it matches their shirt? <laughs> it literally looks like the same animal. The only difference is, is that's not a leatherback, and this this is a leatherback. But other than that, it looks like exactly the same animal. She has a couple of really beautiful bearded dragons as well. And then there's actually peaches here. What is the morph on this one? She's a citrus normal. Citrus normal. What a gorgeous animal. I mean, that thing is beautiful. All the yellows, a little bit of black splotching on it. That's going to be amazing. What's the pairing you're going to do? Are you going to do that one to this or what are you going to do? I don't think I'm doing anything with her, but I'm okay. going to get another um, super citrus and then I'll do Ozzy and Harley. Could have definitely have some cool, pretty babies. I have bearded dragons are so polymorphic, it's absolutely amazing. So uh, I kind of miss breeding them, I really do. I don't know that I ever will, but uh, it's always cool to be around them because they're amazing animals. She was our first. That was your first one? Oh my gosh, so this is what started your passion for them? Oh yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Are you gonna be like a bearded dragon crazy woman? That yeah. have like a thousand of them? Pretty much. Lord <laughs> <laughs> help us all. Yeah. I know. This is certainly one of my favorite snakes. I say that way too often, but it's really true. Uh, D'Albert's pythons are amazing, or white lips pythons. This is actually what they would really consider the northern version, which is the more tan slash coppery looking one than the southern version.
version is typically more the black version. Although I've been told by friends of mine in Indonesia that you can find black ones up north and you can find the kind of bronze ones down in the south, believe it or not. But typically that's kind of how the geographic range works. And this has got to be what, about a year, year and a half, something like yeah, that? Yeah, I believe she's probably about a year old or so. Yeah. Um, yeah. We just got her from our buddy Jonathan at Reptile Passions a few weeks ago. Oh, um, so you just had her. Okay. Yeah, so we've had her for, God, probably about three weeks. Okay. Three weeks or so. Oh my God, very well behaved by the way. You know, the other pythons, white lip pythons are a little bit, you know, nippy. They're a little defensive. There's no doubt about it. But this one is absolutely beautiful, and uh, that's cool. It's, it's, it's got to be one of your dream animals, right? I mean, they are. They're okay. just just that face and the iridescence. I mean, yeah. they're just so much fun. Oh my God, I love them to death. Next up, we actually have Bernie, the Burmese python. I love it, by the way. And of course, this is a wild type Burmese python. You said it's only like a year old, right? Yeah, he's he's um, maybe. 14, 15 months by now. That has yeah. gotten big. I mean, for a berm to be this size in like 14 months, that's got some size. Now, I guess Jeffrey was maybe about this size at that age too, but I just love, you know, the original snake that I got when I was 15 years old, my first ever snake was exactly like this, a wild type Burmese python. So still every time I see them, there's a nostalgia, you know what I mean? There's something about a normal Burmese python that is just so absolutely incredible. And uh, look at just how placid I mean. They're, they are the gentle giants of the big snake world for sure. And we do not power feed him to get to this side, by the yeah, way. Yeah, no, no. He is he just a good. fast grower. Yeah, he looks good. He's totally slender. I mean, I always talk about it. you never want to overfeed, especially giant snakes. So uh, absolutely, you know, looks perfect as far as his definition and stuff like that. So just an absolutely beautiful animal. And you can always tell like that overfeed a little bit by the size of the head too. See how the head looks very proportionate to the body? That's kind of the indication that it's being fed the right way. So we actually have a boa constrictor here that uh, Gary just got recently. We're just kind of checking things out. Now you can see right here, these are what they call vestigial spurs and I can kind of pull it out right there. It's right next to their vent, right? And males basically will have longer vestigial spurs than females. Females have shorter spurs. Now all boas and pythons will have those vestigial spurs, which are basically like remnants of legs to be honest with you, but boas in particular, you can sex them that way. This one has longer spurs. It's definitely a boy. Uh, the shorter spurs would be a girl. So uh, Kevin is a boy. This is an adorable story, guys. This is actually a hypo pearl Green Burmese Python, Hypo is incomplete dominant. You've got, which obviously the super version is gonna be a white type of snake. You've got the albino and the green are actually recessive. But the thing that I think is adorable about this is that- This is her engagement present when we uh, got engaged back in August. Yeah, her engagement. I mean, that, that's a marriage made in heaven, right? I mean, come on. And, and you enjoyed that present? Oh, I love it. And oh, I think I love a her. year ago, she was terrified of snakes. Really? Yeah. So you've come now, such a long way. Yeah, and that's, that's what it's all about. You know, if you ever want to get married and you want your girl to get over, just get her a, a present like a snake. And it works out well. But nevertheless, that is a really beautiful snake. Genetically, it's really cool. Absolutely amazing. As it gets older, it's going to get more yellowish. Really beautiful animal. So, uh, again, little tiny berm that's going to one day be a really big berm. And, of course, we have a little baby Asian water monitor here. How old is this guy? Uh, he's about three months old or so. Three months old. What's his name? His name is Jimbo. Jimothy. Jimbo. Jimmy Jim. e, Jimbo, Jim, Never. all those things. Perfect name. I mean, it definitely works out. And it's just kind of cool, again, that they, they're they so small. They're so amazing. It's super socialized. And to think that this day, one day is going to be a giant monitor. It's a, it's This is an urban dinosaur, as Kevin would say. I mean, it's just a little dinosaur. It's so absolutely adorable. And your stuff is great. I mean, this has been such a great time Thank to you. see all these cool animals. Thank you guys for inviting us into your place and, and showing us around. I can't thank you enough. I'll put a link in the description to his stuff. So please go show him some love. Tell him I sent you. But for now, it's time to get back on the road and head to Orlando. Well, we made it to Florida. We're a couple hours away from Orlando, so uh, it's been a long journey. Been an okay journey. The sun is out. It's 80 degrees outside. Definitely a big departure from Michigan. There's no doubt about that. So uh, this journey has been pretty good. Had a great time over at Gary's place, which was really cool. So uh, again, a couple hours to go, and we've reached our destination at least for the next day or two.
and we made it to Florida. To be honest with you, tomorrow is Crockfest, but we actually just got off the phone with Savannah. We may head over to Gatorland tonight to do like a middle of the night type of thing going on. It will be absolutely incredible. Not sure if we're gonna do it yet. Regardless, this adventure is gonna be amazing, so definitely make sure you hit that subscription button over here and follow along, because there's gonna be a lot of amazing stuff. Also, you can hit a playlist over here if you wanna see some other stuff. Thank you so much for joining me today. I cannot wait to share the rest of this adventure. Have an amazing day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you tomorrow.